Apostle 2 Rebellion is a game of new culture that is a sequel to Apostle, which I guess has to be called Apostle 1 now, except it's nothing like the first game, because while the first game was a hentai game about teenagers working for a secret government demon hunting organization in a school setting, Apostle 2 is about teenagers working for a secret government demon hunting organization in a cyberpunk setting. Wake the fuck up, samurai. We have a city to burn. It is a drastic aesthetic change that I really fucking jam to. These are my first impressions of the first two hours of this game, played on release day and heavily condensed into 25 minutes for no particular reason except I didn't know what I was fucking doing when I decided to make this. I'm guessing this is whether or not you want to skip the tutorial. Fuck it, we don't need pants where we're going. I remember. That is a lie. Alright, good. Let's get going then. I maybe should have said I for gore. <laughs> so buckle in as I attempt to communicate my impressions of the game entirely through the unstable mind of a madman as I try something completely new. And I don't mean flexing my porn tastes on the internet. God knows I do that enough already. Oh yeah, that's the stuff! The game starts with a black cop two days from retirement giving an eager young rookie a tour of Neo Detroit, while an ominous man who looks like the slit-faced woman from Japanese folklore just casually chills three feet away from them. The wide-eyed rookie informs the chiseled veteran that he joined the police to see literal fucking demons with his own eyes, and Django Unpaid rightfully calls him a fucking idiot. But before we can absorb that, the two get a call to respond to a pair of thieves from the 3rd Street Saints and use the most impractical method of speeding to the scene, so brace yourself because I'm going to let this next part and my reaction play out in full. You taught how to use your jet boots! Alright, this aesthetic is way different from the first game already, but jet boots? <coughs> there was a chapter about that in the handbook. Right. Well, anyways, let's go. What are they, farting their way to- what? <coughs> that did not look as cool as you think it did. Segways of the future! Fucking high-powered roller skates for cops. Alright. Powered by farting. Ugh. Oh my fucking god. Alright. But we don't have time for that, because now we smash cut to our main character smash cutting Fiora from League of Leggings The Game, which tried to tell me my name was Sarugi, but I reject this and instead decide to call my character Akachi the Betrayer, shortened to just Akachi because of an arbitrary as fuck 7 character limit. Akachi was so engrossed in one-trick ponying Fiora and riding all the way to the heights of Silver 4 that he totally forgot about some boring office meeting he had to be at, so a Gyaru with a bat that for some reason breathes fire is sent to collect him and the two ride a motorcycle that screams insecure. Yeah, I totally forgot. You're lucky it was me and not someone else. You might have ended up getting your face remodeled. I think that's what they call assault. But a minute later, my statement is proven unfounded when she suggests that I rub myself against her to eliminate the smell of Fiora before some girl named Amelia finds out. Seeing no reason to refuse her, I immediately accept this, and unlike 99% of anime out there where the woman gets unreasonably angry at people doing what they are told, Miyabi proves to be more fun than that, and, recognizing the consequences of her own actions, screws with Akachi right back. Whoa! Did I get you? God damn it. So, after the officers use their heelys to escape their feelies, they run into a pair of goons who claim a silver-haired lady deemed them worthy of being called unkindled, but this appears to have been a lie as they inject the hard drug she gave them and turn into a pair of biblically accurate angels. But our boys in blue are good servants of the Imperium and know exactly what to do when filthy Xenos pretending to be God walk into their town. Stand perfectly still and continue to shoot it long after it has been made clear that they don't give a fuck about your bullets. These are very polite Xenos too. They don't really move or do anything for two entire cutscenes. 
in which the officers demonstrate they have cheats enabled because they never have to reload. Unfortunately, the rookie has a bad VPN and soon the server admins disable his infinite ammo cheat, which is when the Magna, these things are called Magna by the way, or Manga if your translation team doesn't use spell check. That is when the Magna finally stopped taking a harmless lead shower, and in a shock twist that surprised everybody, lop off the retiree's arm. And... Huh? What's that light? S something's coming! Oh, we're just gonna run it the fuck over? Nope. <laughs> that didn't look as cool as you thought it did, but I appreciate the attempt. <laughs> Don't stop trying, I can see the passion. So Miyabi and Akachi interrupt the newbie cop from facing Judgment Day by driving right through the middle of the chaos. Akachi force pushes the two Magna away. The first one is a boss fight at the end of the dungeon, so how he did this, I don't know. And the big one smashes Miyabi's bike. These characters, though, on how they ended up here. Well, there went her bike. No, my bike, my precious bike. What, this hasn't happened before? He smashed it. Thank you, Captain Obvious. God damn it, me and my dad spent forever fixing that thing up and now you're gonna spend forever more. You okay? All that hard work, all that money, gone just like that. What colors your blood? <laughs> that was fucking ominous. Red, I think. So she manifests a bat in a cut in that actually looks pretty good since it uses professional artwork instead of the RPG sprites like the first part of their entrance did. We then one shot them in the tutorial fight from earlier, but somehow the first one gets away and it's gonna be like 30 times stronger when we see it again, even though it's canonically only been like 10 fucking minutes. And we are joined up by two new people. Amelia, whose special power is gun, but this time it actually works. And Fuyune, who uses the United States government. We're about to join forces to pursue the roided up, uh, roid. When I learn that we are able to apparently telepathically communicate with HQ or something. But the cost of doing this is talking to a pink robot mascot character that I'm 100% certain won't absolutely get on my fucking nerves, don't worry about it. Anyways, Kanako here has the power to convert areas that are infested by the Magna into a mirror dimension called Megidos that are like a copy of reality, and yes that does sound familiar, but this pink affront to God warns us there are human people in the infected area and converting it would basically be a death sentence to them. But Akachi decides... I missed the part where that's my problem. Just do it! For he too understands that the Emperor counts casualties in planets instead of people, and the hunt begins. Yeah, you better fucking shut up, Fuyune. Apostle Rebellion is a turn-based RPG that uses a command wheel instead of a regular menu and a turn order based off the agility stat. Attack, defend, items, fairly standard stuff as well as three resources to manage, health, spirit points, and tech points. Okay, so it doesn't differ that much, but it still does it well at least. Tech points are gained by both normal attacking as well as by the Magna you fight. This resource replenishes regularly and enables specialized attacks from each character's weapons, called an attribute. Akachi's attribute is a katana called Suzanoo. Miyabi has the aforementioned firebat named Bad Boys, Amelia has a gun called Stargazer, and Fuyune's drones are called Checkmate. I, uh, I guess they're both just called that. I mean, she has two drones, but the game only gives the one name. Spirit points are a highly limited mana source that allows spell casting. Like, limited to the point where the first time I used magic was when I faced the first dungeon's boss, opting instead to survive off of band-aids and potato chips I bought out of a vending machine. 
So at least in the beginning of the game, it is actually more dickish about that resource than a fucking Shin Megami Tensei title. Speaking of potato chips, however, the method through which you receive money in this game is the developers praying to god that you've never played Final Fantasy VIII. It's almost one to one. You passively make money from your organization after a certain number of physical steps taken in the world, except in that game they tried to stop you from abusing the system by assigning a seed rank that would actively decrease if you stuck your thumb up your ass running in a corner for three hours to farm money. It, uh, it didn't work in that game because it wouldn't take your money away, just give less of it. No, the real deterrent from doing that in Final Fantasy VIII was that Gil was fucking worthless. <coughs> Anyways, uh, this game just doesn't seem to have a deterrent, so if you want to break the economy, grab a bot or something, program it to run your ass in circles in a non-combat zone for three hours, then turn off your monitor and go find something else to do while it runs in the background. Maybe they do have a deterrent from that, but it hasn't shown up yet, if that's the okay. case. Stats are organized as follows. Attack, which boosts the power of your normal attack command, as well as your attribute menu attacks. Basically, anything that uses tech points instead of spirit points is affected by this stat. Defense, which lowers damage from normal attacks exclusively, so if the enemy hits you with something that has an actual name, this stat is worthless for mitigating it. Do not be fooled. Intelligence, which boosts atom-based attacks. Oh, by the way, they call spells atom in this game because, you know, why wouldn't you want more Bioshock in your game? That... that wasn't a knock, I was genuinely asking. Basically, any attack that uses spirit points instead of tech points kills stuff harder the higher you take this number. Mind which lowers damage from special attacks, so magic, supers, and pretty much every attack in the game that has a name. This is, so far, the superior defensive stat. Agility, which by default only affects turn order, though some characters seem to have attacks whose damage is at least partially scaling off of this stat, so, you know, bear that in mind, but thus far I can't actually confirm that. Usually, in RPG games, luck is a stat that is intentionally vaguely defined, but Apostle's menu is extremely helpful in that it outright states what it does for you, which I cannot be thankful enough for. <clears throat> luck boosts your resistance to status ailments, the rate at which you successfully inflict status ailments, the strength of all your buffing spells, the strength of your debuffing attacks, and your hit and evasion rates. Luck is counterintuitively basically the stats that governs everything except your critical hit rate, which is usually the only thing most RPGs have this stat control. And that does it for stats. <clears throat> except for one thing, one other unique thing to combat that I will admit freely I do not understand and didn't really require, I mean to the point where I went back and did the actual tutorial after the fact, while I was writing this script in the hopes that the game would explain it. It was during this that I learned about the gauge. So, you know, apparently you have a stock of power that is gained by landing critical hits as well as getting by Magna similar to tech points. The tutorial also told me the higher the difficulty level is, the more XP, money, and items the enemies will drop. Which confused me because the difficulty selection at the main menu literally said the exact opposite of this. Which is why I stuck to normal, so I don't know who to believe here, and it's possible the developers weren't fucking talking to each other while working on this game. Those who want to suffer, enemies are four times as powerful, EXP, money, and items, and item drops are cut to a third. But as for the part I didn't actually understand, the shield icon. Apparently it's called an anima barrier, and what it does is if you crit or exploit enemy weaknesses more times in one round than the number displayed on that shield icon, that magna is stunned. I didn't really have an opportunity to demonstrate this though, because enemies in the starting dungeon tend to die in the first time you exploit a weakness, and these shield icons usually require two or three hits. So I would definitely crank up the difficulty to hell mode if you already know what you're doing in an RPG. The last mechanic to talk about is chaining attacks, which is literally just hit the enemy with multiple people before its turn comes up, but some attacks, like Akachi's cross slash, just hits twice because he feels like it. 
Basically, after the first person lands a hit, all subsequent attacks against that target before its turn comes up, or you miss, do 50% more damage. Fairly easy concept. Just, uh, just play the tutorial if you choose to pick the game up. Don't do what I did. That's all for combat and money, but character progression is where things are a tad different. I've seen this system before in a few games, but I know it isn't that common, though it's still fairly common in RPG circles, so I'll give a brief word about it. Character progression works in two parts. First and foremost, character levels boost the stats of a character by a fixed amount, but that's only one part of getting stronger. The other thing that it does is hand out AP after every fight. You remember the sphere grid from Final Fantasy X? Well, it sort of resembles that, but... But wait! There's more! It is much simpler. After every fight, you earn a certain amount of AP. You use this AP in the skill field menu to learn new abilities for each character, as well as give a permanent passive boost to statistics. If you've played the previous game in the series, nothing has changed. If you haven't played the previous game, all you really need to know is remember to go to the skill field every couple of fights and see if you can unlock something new. Everybody earns AP at the same rate, but each point of AP earned is instanced to everyone equally. So if the game says you've earned 2 AP from a fight, you actually earned 8 as everybody receives 2 points just for them. Unless something changed from the last game, this applies whether the character is in your active battle party or not. So don't worry about people falling behind since AP is more important than your actual level to becoming an OP God Stomper anyways. Alright, now we've wrapped up how it all works mechanically. Just one more thing. Everything you've heard in the background, by the way, that's all from this game's score. Unless this gets claimed for some reason, in which case, sorry you aren't hearing it. Now, my music taste can charitably be described as eclectic and uncharitably described as monstrous garbage, but this beat hits me in all the right places. No, seriously, it's broken into my house with a gun and refuses to leave until I renounce my stance of flattest justice. Please help. So after dealing with that thing, because gun in the hands of an American does not fuck around, do better. And robbing a dead man of his house keys, do not ask. We arrive at the lair of the enemy we one shot ten minutes ago with the knee pole steel. I just wrote that, oh my fucking god. The lair turns out to be the dumpster behind a Russian bar, I'm serious. Can, can any Russians confirm that you just casually have demons sifting through your bar trash? Or am I being culturally insensitive and that's just a Detroit thing? After a brief monologue from Miyabi in which the angel is just... He's just standing there. Menacingly! Being all polite and shit again, the four of us get ensorcelled in some weird glow that I would have half expected at this point to be a 20 second transformation sequence. Then we give it the proper cultural American welcome. That is to say, beating it to death behind the dumpster of a local Applebee's. But unlike the fight ten minutes ago, the more trash the icon of Satan eats, the stronger he becomes, and he can smell Akachi's freshly minted silver banner. After a few short minutes, we finish it off with a flaming metal bat to the dick. If it didn't want to have a regular head for its state-sanctioned execution, then we had to go below the belt to break open some type of head. So no head? So after the fight, we got a fortified defense anima. No, I didn't explain what that is, but don't worry, it's literally just what this game calls equipment. That's it. 
and a mysterious card, which the game assures me is a thing it will explain to me later and thus remains a mystery for purposes of this video. Yeah, I want to know Mega uh, Magna has, has its core destroyed. The cores of all the Magnas it created vanish. I wonder why that is. There are multiple competing theories, but as of now, no one knows for certain. Who cares? Huh? Our job is to kill Magnas, and that's what we did. Who cares about the details? So after Akachi shows off how too cool for school he is by not giving a fuck about all the lives that were ended today, Miyabi calls Chinako to remove us from the metaverse and return to reality. Akachi comments on the lack of rain and, uh... What, was it raining? I have absolutely no idea. It sure as fuck didn't look like it was raining. Uh... I mean, I'm, I'm a little tired. I've been recording for like two hours. Oh, that's new. You usually play the tough guy. Uh, hello? Want to rest against my chest for a sec? Sure. <laughs> the expression. Oh, for you to stop that. Calm down, it was a joke. It doesn't sound like a joke when you- We then take a subway train back to the inner city, which, if this is where we live, I have no honest idea. The apartment at the beginning was Fiora's, not Akachi's. It might explain why he has such a massive stick in his ass all of a sudden. During the train ride, everyone continues discussing the day's events, and I am faced with the hardest challenge I have had to date. None can resist the allure of her sweet voice. Nice curves, great voice, large tits, and she's pretty to boot. I used to think that life was fair, but not after I met her. What? You realize that even yours are bigger than your fucking head. All right. I am afraid to see this person if, uh... If she's considered big, then I'm... If you lot ain't considered oversized, then I'm afraid to see this person. Again, the first game did this shit with the weird proportions, too. Don't you think so, too, Akachi? I, I thought they were toning it down from the first game, believe it or not. Like, it, the, the, the weird-ass proportions. Uh... What the fu- <laughs> Glowy is built different, you're not bad either, I love you. What the fuck? I kind of want to press this, just because what? Why? <laughs> but I'm gonna go with built different. I do- yeah, well, maybe. All of these have merit, because- Again, what? You're it's, it's bigger than your head. This one is just fucking audacious. No, I'm gonna be here racked with indecision for a minute. This is funny. This is lady, you're fucking nuts. And this is just audacious, and I'm really fucking curious. Fuck. Uh... Okay, 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 okay. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Do I want the audacity? Do I want the funnies? Do I do I want to be dunny with the funnies? Do I want, ah, fuck. This is the first hard choice. And it's for such a stupid reason. Um, rational, funny, audacious. Because I don't know how we got here. So basically, safe. Yeah, safe, daring, and what the fuck. We're gonna go with what the fuck. You love me? Where did that come from? Well, or I appreciate it. It's not like I hate you. It's just, is this really the right place for a confession? I think they call this the rope bridge effect. People you meet in dangerous situations seem more attractive to you or something. Oh, never mind. What am I even? I didn't take you as the sort of man to say stuff like that in front of others. How surprisingly assertive. I think I, I also, Earth the Ami, Earth the Ami. Huh? I'm asleep, aren't I? 
Oh yeah, that's the next station over. Thanks a bunch. Hmm? What is it? Just to confirm, you did say I love you a second ago, right? Yeah, I did. It was that actress who showed up on the billboard. I don't know. Something about her kid me. <laughs> I regret nothing. That scene more or less sums up what I think of the game so far. It is fucking hilarious and I'm having a grand old time. I rate this. Monkey brain receives the tingly dopamine hahas. Out of five. <laughs> a very scientific measuring stick, I'm sure you'll agree. But understand that this is an impression, not a review. Don't subscribe.